What you're looking at is a carbon analyzer here at the Appalachian Lab. And what this analyzer is doing is looking at stream water and trying to determine the carbon that's in it. And it's all a part of what they do here at the lab. And I'm joined by Eric Davidson. Eric, uh, the lab here does some pretty unique research. Tell us a little bit about it. Sure, sure. Well, we focus on everything from genes to whole ecosystems. So to understand how an ecosystem works, you need to understand the genetic makeup of the plants and the animals, and then how those plants and animals interact with each other, with the streams, with the soil, with the atmosphere, and figure out how the whole thing hangs together and works together as an ecosystem. Earlier we looked at a, uh, a researcher looking at dating of wood. Talk a little bit about that. Right, so one of the issues that we face now, of course, is change in our climate. Uh, whether it's natural change or human-induced change, the climate is changing. And in order to compare the rates of current change in climate, we need to study what happened in the past. My name is Robin Palman. I'm the lab manager here. And today we're going to analyze a 100-year-old tree core. We're going to separate the rings of the tree core to analyze, analyze the carbon going back in time. I'm going to cut the individual rings with a knife. And then we're going to analyze it on our isotope ratio mass spectrometer. I noticed that you have some bay grasses here. People will wonder, what are bay grasses doing all the way out here in Western Maryland? Well, first of all, remember that what's happening in the bay starts up here. So the headwaters of the Chesapeake Bay are up here in the mountains. So in addition to the theme of genes to ecosystems, another theme that we have at the uh, University of Maryland Center for Environmental Studies is mountains to the sea. Now those grasses actually weren't Although they're called bay grasses, they aren't sea grasses. They're actually freshwater grasses. And some of our scientists here are working on figuring out how to restore freshwater wetlands uh, that have been disturbed by human activity. And we need to understand the genetics of those grasses to figure out which ones are best suited to, for restoration. This is Regina Trott. She's a faculty research assistant here at the lab, and she's preparing a gel. She's doing that so that we can extract the information from the stream samples to better assess the quality and health of our watersheds. I know a lot of people will ask that question, why is science important? I know why it's important, but explain to the layman why it's important. Well, I keep going back to things like, well, where does our food come from? Where does our water come from? Where does our fresh air come from? Uh, those are things that we can't substitute, and they all are dependent upon the environment and the way we manage the environment and how intelligently we manage the environment. So our prosperity and our health is dependent on how well we understand the environment, how well we can manage it, and science is fundamental to that process. Eric, thank you so very much for joining us My here pleasure. on Maryland Public Television. Now let's go back to you in the studio.